so just another hint uh, go further of course you have to look in the right timing in the right places if, if you look for animals in the nabib during midday or at in the night maybe you don't find so much but if you go in the forests of borneo or central and south america or uh, in africa in tropical africa you have to go out at night of course beware of lions of course if you're in africa but aside of that you have to go out at night because it's at night that insects and old arthropods go out to and to look for food and they are uh, protected by the night so they are not found by you know birds and so on so this is another example of why these animals stay out at night during the day they could be during the sorry the first hours of the day they are still light lightly visible like in this shot but as soon as the sun goes out goes up they become less visible as this this is just an example of what happens during the day so you will miss this insect for example if you go in the forest at midday this is another example this is a very transparent and tiny mantis from borneo and this is totally transparent you will you wouldn't see this during the day it's, it's almost impossible to see it. I, I saw it at night. I shoot that image to show how it was transparent. This is another example of how this mantis is really thin. Is really is like a it's like a ghost. It's incredible. And another one is that also some vertebrates are almost invisible during the day. Uh, so at night they are active and you can see them uh this is a this these are just other other examples of photos i shoot because i knew that i would have found that animal in this case this is a salamander from the alps and i found it because uh, i was looking for this in the right season it was starting of the summer actually but i, I was very high in the alps so it's an alpine environment it's cold so you have, you, you have these animals in activity even later and it was like afternoon after some uh, clouds and humidity came up from the ground and from the, the, the area below so they could have been active because they need humidity so you have to learn about your subject and look for them in the right place of course thank you about uh, loving the ghost photo lee lemon <laughs> Uh, this is another example this is another salamander for another corner of italy and you can only found this subspecies only after very heavy rains during the right season the right temperatures so this is another example and so on i'm, I'm going very fast because i don't want to do some too much time but i i, I put mm, many examples of that to to show you uh that you have to learn about your animals this is the point uh, how, I, how i found my animals my, my subject i know them i i track for them i i learn where they when and where they are active to to look for them these are uh, uh, these are tadpoles of uh, a micro eyelid frog in the in the pitcher plants of borneo for example and i was looking for them they are always there if there is the breeding season on um, and if you go at night you can see them with the torches in a better way for example you can find of course during the right season and the right timing uh, the breeding ones so as as i did with this uh, tree frogs breeding on the on the trees around the pond in borneo as well and another very important thing i do is to hire or to ask to local people to help me and this is a very important thing if i'm an herpetologist i'm a, a, a reptiles and amphibians researchers actually uh, so i started with my passion of nature about uh, studying amphibians and reptiles so i know many people around the world that uh, help can help me finding my my beloved amphibians for example as i did in panama 
by calling my friend Abel Batista Rodriguez and his wife Pamela. You are seeing them in this photo and they permitted me and they granted me with, the, with their presence and their help to find many of my subjects like uh, this tiny glass frog, these two breeding glass frogs from Panama. And if you go with the right people and if you go with the right um, if you go with the, with the knowledgeable people of the place you even um, you save even more time because you know the animals you know where they are active when but you are not from that place so they already know the right places to look for them so for example I, uh, thanks to them I was able to photograph all these different morphs of uh, strawberry poison dart frogs for example and these photos for for instance are all shot with the one uh, 100 millimeters ultra macro lava uh, lens just for your uh, just to give you some uh, advice also about the lenses i used um, i'm starting on getting more on the technical side of course um, this is for example shot with a 100 millimeters uh, lava the ultra macro one of course and these are this this one is the same animal not probably not really the same animal the specimen uh, but the same animal so it's same uh, morph color morph but is as this is this one uh, as i've been shot with a with a 15 millimeters and this again 100 millimeters macro 15 millimeters same morph and with a wide angle macro and a classic portrait macro of course this is another one and the same also the same morph not the same specimen with a 15 millimeters macro again another one with a 15 millimeters macro uh, going with a with a specialist also also uh, could grant you the possibility to took not just macros but telling the stories about the research they are carrying on and even you can end up finding some of some very very interesting species uh, i was in peru many times with this researcher that is alessandro catenazzi from uh, miami university he is a, a specialist of amphibians reptiles and conservation and with him we found a lot of very interesting species and i was able to photograph this one uh, for example and other frogs i was also lab able to to find uh, uh, sad things of course uh, to, mm, the stories i i tell uh, aren't always nice i mean uh, aren't always positive sometimes i also share the negative sides of being in nature and doing uh, conservation photography in this case you're seeing a dead uh, um, frog it's a species from the high handes and it was dead because of the fungus that is killing frogs all around the world so i wanted to tell this story too and i was able to do that thanks to the researchers i was with another thing i was able to photograph an extinct in the wild uh, toad this is the, the so-called golden frog from panama atelopus zeteki and I was able to do that because I met this nice person that is Edgardo Griffith from Valle de Anton Conservation Center in Panama that uh, was able to save them from extinction and is raising the next population of these uh, toads. It's, to, it's another species the one is holding now in this end and hopefully in the, in the future he, he will be able to release them back in the wild. This is another species of frog that uh, meant a lot to me because this is a so-called Lazarus species. So, so it's a species that was believed to be extinct in the wild, extinct in that, that from that uh, location for, since 10 years. And uh, we found that again in Peru with Alessandro and it was amazing to see it. Another example and so on. So uh, I, I put all these photos because I wanted to show you all the things that you can do thanks to people that can help you. So another advice and another thing that I always do when I'm planning my shootings is to call 
for people from for local people for guides i hire guide i i happily pay a local guide a, a certified one of course uh, someone that is working for the local park or something like this and i i happily pay to have them uh, their advice and so on um this is another question from egle from the facebook he is asking she is asking actually sorry for mis misunderstanding how do you get in touch with the researchers are they so willing to share their time to guide you and show the location it depends there are some actually some researchers are, are also friends of mine so it's it's it's, it's actually uh, you know something that goes since a long time of course it goes on in other cases for example the, the two guys from panama abel batista and his wife uh, they do that for work as well they they carry people uh, on a of course a sustainable way and they go around with people and that pay them if if you want if you need uh, they they get paid and they can show you some species some unique species so and I read another question from YouTube. Do you move them before shooting every time? Uh, no, at all. I'm trying. Uh, uh, um, it depends. When I'm with the researchers, sometimes I have to move them because they they have previously been catched and by researchers for monitoring, for measuring, and so on. So sometimes, yes, I have to move them because they were in a plastic bag, for for example. Mm, so I put them back in the wild and they take a shoot. In this case, for example, the, the photo you are seeing, the, the two mating Atelopus, I, I would never touch them because they are mating and I could stress them a lot. And there's another uh, example of um, another photo that where I didn't move the animal at all. This is a calling, it, it was calling, it just the focal sac is not completely inflated here but he was calling is a calling male if you touch them if you move them they they will stop calling and they will deflate their vocal sac uh, totally you you wouldn't see that mm, vocal sac uh, uh, under the throat and i i wouldn't be able to do the, this shot that is a very tricky shot to do if you want i can tell you more about this shot because it's a um, is a shot that where I change the focusing uh, during the shooting. So I, I set 30 seconds shooting. I, I first focus on the subject. I make the flashes go as soon as, as I click. And then the next uh, 29 sec seconds after, I turn the focus on infinite to get the stars. And I open the aperture from f let's say f13 f16 to let's say f4 of the 15 millimeters lava i was using for this image uh, no in this case i, I wasn't new uh, emanuele is asking remote control no i wasn't using the remote remote control in this case but yes not to stress them i often use remote control so we are getting to the next uh, uh, question I'm, I'm i'm seeing you are asking the, the thing i was planning to tell you right after so how do you approach your subjects uh, of course the, the reply the general reply is quietly moving trying to avoid contact whenever as possible this is very important it's actually mandatory to me i like and i loved to touch animals i'm an pathologist i repeat that so if i have permissions and I do research I, or I'm with the researchers, I sometimes move the animals, but I try to keep this at minimum. I don't like to touch them so much anymore. I, I, was, I touched the animals more in the past when I was younger and less experienced, but uh, I started not loving these images because, for example, for lizards, I started seeing that when you catch them and you pose them on a rock to do the photo, for example, that you can often see that, that the pupil is enlarged for the stress. And I didn't like that thing. I didn't like to show an animal that was a little bit stressed. So I, I try to avoid that whenever it's possible. For example, in this case, 
that leaf frog, mountain leaf frog from Borneo, was so confident that I wouldn't see it that he stayed still for the wall shooting that lasted like, let's say, 10 minutes, 20 minutes maybe maximum. And I put the camera on the ground. I was using this. I was using. I mean, actually, I I was using. Um, I was using the, the, the bigger one, the D850, uh, the reflex one, but I was using the 15 millimeters. I put the camera on the ground, so very, very easy. I uh, just put the camera on the ground. Um, I, 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 I use the flashes in that case. Uh, so in this case, um, you are seeing, the all light you are seeing is flashes. I, I put two flash on, on flashes with diffusers on the front a side of the camera and one bigger one uh, this one for example uh, I'm holding now it's a classic you know gun shaped flash from in this case it's a Nikon flash but it doesn't matter I always them use them in, in manual so it doesn't matter what you have of course and uh, to give some light on the background so this is the thing I did with this image to get this this photo um, <laughs> Dario Bacchini is, is saying uh, that I'm uh, making everything feel easy to do. Yes, sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's harder. The, 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 for example, the, the tricky photo I showed you before of the tree frog uh, is not so it's not so easy to, to do, actually, uh, I must admit. Um, this is a classic macro, for example. Uh, in this case, it's a classic macro, but for a skittish and shy subject, it's, it was a, a fly, uh, a bee-like, uh, very similar, a mimic of bees. Uh, in this case, I just moved very, 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 very <laughs> slowly. I approached the fly while, while it was feeding on this daisy. And another thing that I did is to put the, the, the right side flash. You you are not seeing flashes, but I was using two very well diffused flashes that we show you later. In this case, I I I I, um, I try to avoid the flash to shade the fly, so um, it didn't perceive the sh the shadow coming over it, so it didn't perceive the arrival or something above it so uh, this is another trick i use often to with the skittish or flying insect not to scare them away i try to avoid sh shadows to go over them while i'm approaching them another thing is i try to stay on their on their um, side on their altitude i mean uh, so i i uh, they don't see something coming from above that is very uh, yeah it's very scary for them this is another example say this is in this case it's a wild bee and it was uh, warming up at the sun and i just approached it very slowly and i took this shot with another another i'm i'm, I'm not saying this always but I, I was using the 100 millimeters macro from lawa as well i'm going faster i don't want to be late but uh, i wanted to show you show you something about my error as well. As I told you, I try not to mess with nature as best as I can. Sometimes I don't know my subject very well, it happens. And for taking this shot, for example, I tried my best to stay still and let the fishes, the mud skippers fish, come closer to me, as they were doing, because they were... Um, uh, they were walking all along the shore uh, following the tide so i said okay i i just say um, i just put myself um, along the beach waiting with my camera in that case i, I had a, an older lens it was a 24 millimeters the the lava still didn't, didn't exist i think or maybe just the 75 millimeters macro the first 75 millimeters macro it was a, quite a, a few years ago, this image. And the, the thing that happened before this, this, this photo is that uh, I didn't perceive that I was stopping. I was stopping all the fishes to walk along the shore. 
So uh, at one point, a friend of mine told me, Emma, you are doing a mistake because they are always or trying to circumnavigate you from the back. So I was in, in some way doing a traffic jam of fishes, of mud skippers all around me. And that I don't like this. So I, I changed my position. I, I put myself uh, a little bit uh, far from them uh, on another corner of the beach. And I was, I, I was finally able to get this shot. So I was very happy to, to do the right thing, not stressing the animals and so on. Uh, Zoltan Horos is asking uh, from Facebook, uh, Hello Manuele, any other interesting session? I'm planning a trip out to Zanzibar and I'm having a problem finding material on research materials for wildlife. So it is really useful, but I'm always afraid to miss a shot. Yes, of course. Uh, how can you decide what lens to put in the camera when searching for subject, when you still don't know what you will find, of course. Um, how do you adjust for unexpected situation? Do you try to rapidly change the lens or try to get the necessary setup? Okay, yes, um, that's a very good question. I always put the uh, 100 millimeters lens as a first lens attached to my camera. Almost always I'm using this lens attached because it's 100 millimeters. It, pers me, it permits me to, to, to get on macro side, of course, uh, even a, you know, a dragonfly is something that is maybe far and you cannot approach it very fastly, of course, or very, very easily. And if the, the things permits me that, later I try some wide angle macro and stuff like this. I learned that by trials, uh, trials and error when I was younger, because for example, when I was in Sardinia, I tried to photograph uh, local uh, skink from, from Sardinia and uh, as I put I, I tried uh, the wide angle lens first first it was very very a lot of years ago very much time ago uh, and this, the skink was away from me in a blink of an eye before I would be able to get a classic macro shot so I advise you to, to I always try to put my macro uh, setup, my classic macro setup. So 100 millimeters lens. I show you this. I wanted to do that later, but uh, the, 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 this is my bracket where, uh, for macro flashes. Uh, I put this, I put here the, the flash holder and I use this, sorry, I'm taking them, these macro flashes from Mikey. So I always take them mounted on the camera, of course. Uh, of course, uh, I'm using, sometimes I'm using two cameras and you will discover why in a few minutes. Um, but normally when I'm out, I try to stick with that setup because uh, it's the thing that permits you to get the, the shot in a more fast way. So I'm, I'm going a little bit faster now. I don't want to miss. Uh, this is another setup, luckily, uh, but yeah, this, the presentation is helping me a lot. <laughs> My organization was good uh, this time. This is another setup I'm using a lot lately. This is another setup I'm always having in my bag. And uh, this is another way I'm approaching the animals in the last month, years, with the underwater camera. This is a D850 Nikon inside this sleeve, underwater sleeve, that is from Autex. It's a US brand and I love this because it's lightweight. You can remove this silicone thing in a, in a blink of an eye. You can put it in a blink of an eye. If you can pack it in a, in, a, in a luggage, in the backpack, even if you are going in the woods, so in a, in a land-based shooting area, but you can find a small pond, for example, with the breeding toads on frogs, and you are able to do underwater shootings with ease. Uh, I will show you another lens I use for the underwater shooting, of course, in a few seconds, but this is another example of what I'm doing for approach animal now. And someone mentioned co remote control before. This is a, a, an example. I use the remote control connecting the camera 
with my phone with this, in this case I was using snap bridge from Nikon brand and uh, I show you another time this is my phone this is the sorry this is the actual thing I'm seeing I can change aperture ISO rating white balance time and so on even mode from A to M from manual from aperture first and so on so it's very useful. I have to use in this case uh, uh, autofocus lens. So I, I, when I use this setup, I don't use lower lenses because I can't autofocus from remote, of course. But uh, uh, I use the lower lenses underwater as well when I could move the the zooming and focus rings, of course. Uh, and I was able in, in this case. I was able to avoid the stress to the animals, my presence in the water, my heavy and voluminous body into the water. And I was able to take some shots like this one, for example. This is just an example. Uh, this is a very delicate moment for the amphibians. So I always try to avoid uh, any stress to them, any more stress to them. They see you. so. If you avoid to be seen and you put the camera that is still, it stays still, they will come down and they will act naturally. They will continue to, de to deposit their eggs like this. For example, the spectacle salamanders are doing in a small stream pond in the Apennines in Italy. And this is another occasion I, I use that setup. In this case, I used the, the camera in a split screen, so halfway out of the water always using the remote control in this case as well not to enter the water in other occasion of course you have to move into the water of course you have to move and look for animals uh, <laughs> running them around like in this case i was photographing a water beetle larvae that predated a um, tadpole um, and the water was very cold as in this case you, you are seeing i'm I'm wearing winter clothes and uh, the water was very cold, but is, it was worth doing that because I was able to get uh, this shot, for example. So um, another advice I can give you is if you can, you, you can carry you around this. I, I always carry with me this Autex um, sleeve, Autex underwater housing with a dome, with a circular dome to get some underwater shots wide angle shots this is another thing i do and uh, to avoid uh, stress uh, sometimes i i approach the animals when i know that ca i can do that for example with this chameleon that was well hidden in the, in these shrubs in the namib desert it was calm the, the the slightly darker coloration is not because he's afraid of me but it was actually thermoregulating it was warming up at the sun so um of course, I, I wasn't I wasn't disturbing it too much. I just posed a flash, a diffused flash on the left side, and the other light you, you are seeing is the the sunlight uh, coming from the the right side of this image. And I didn't touch the animal at all because if I do that, I can transmit my smell to the animal and I could ruin his life because the jackals or other predators could find it by smelling my, my smell, my, my odor. So uh, it's always best to avoid to touch animals also for this reason. Um, Dario is also, is also asking me what with the Nikon app, you are always able to focus correctly remotely. Depends. Yes, normally. Uh, yes, sometimes when I have low lights of course it, it became it become a little bit trickier but yeah I, I i find it very useful actually this is another occasion when i approach the animal i, I try to be correct with them this case is was a venomous snake that already had his prey he, he has uh, some prey in his guts so if you touch it uh, not only you risk to be bitten of course but this is a side note also, you are risking for it to vomit and you will ruin his lunch. So it's very, very, uh, it's a really delicate moment. You, you, I, I really advise you do not to do that. So I approached it very quietly 
I was using uh, the 15 millimeters or another wide angle lens. I changed them a lot and uh, I try to do the shots by moving me frontward and backward to the, get the, the focus with the diffuser flashes helping me to stay away from it. So I, um, I, I try to, uh, to put a barrier between me and the venomous snakes, of course. Uh, this is another photo I like a, a lot. I, I took this photo in, Nam in, Nam in the Namib desert and I tried to, to get this shot uh, without disturbing the animal, but actually trying to get as close as possible. And Lava guys, Lee Lemon, Kevin, you all, uh, Chen, all, all of you, please don't look, look the, the next image I I'm about to, to, look, uh, to, to show you. Uh, this is a sensitive image for you so please don't look and also the people that is sensitive about how using the lenses in the field because if you are among these people you will probably don't like the way <laughs> i was using the 15 millimeters macro lens so jokes apart yes i always try to, uh, to keep the stress of the animals at le uh, at, uh, at, at the least uh, level and um, and I wait, of course. Uh, people shooting wolves uh, or birds are used to waiting. I don't know why we macro shooters cannot do the same with some delicate or stress or, mm, you know, mm, unique or peculiar species that have to be treated with, uh, with some respect. So in this case, for example, this is another occasion when I waited for the lizard to go out of the uh, eye socket of the dead seal uh, in, in Peru. This is another occasion, another example. I waited and the toad start call, started calling again. So uh, I wasn't stressing it at all. I was using the flashes. I put two flashes in front of it, one flashes to light the background. No problem to the animal. Also here, I was able to photograph this animal uh, calling. This is a toad from Borneo. And I, I waited there, I waited in, in the darkness and it was standing still calling. So I waited and I put the flashes, I stayed still. It started to call back again after hearing me moving around a little bit with the tripod and so on. I used the tripod to keep the position, not because I needed, it, because it, it's all flash but I used the tripod to not to move too much around it. And then I was able to photograph a, 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 fem a female coming by, approaching it. So I left them to their future uh, mating possibly. <laughs> so I, I was able to photograph them without disturbing them. We were just waiting, wait. It's so beautiful to be at night in the forest, uh, hearing the sound of the forest. Um, yeah, the, actually, Lee Lemon is asking if the 15 millimeters is still fine now. Actually, I must admit that I sent that lens to Kevin to fix it <laughs> because it was a little bit uh, full of sand, probably. No, it was actually fine, uh, but I had to uh, to clean it a little bit. So in the past, I sent the lens to, to Kevin uh, to have it... Uh, uh, controlled for example so so for yeah for to be sure that don't worry it's it's, it's here it's here with me it's fine it's saying you hello so don't worry i'm i'm going fast i don't want to 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 lose the time we are about to close to hand this live show but i still have to, something to show you so what you put in your bag let's end this presentation with this i try to put everything i need and a little more until my backbone will survive. This is the truth. Uh, I, uh, okay, uh, uh, from YouTube, someone is asking, why do you use as a focusing light for, ah, okay, okay. What I use as a focusing light for Manman lenses? Uh, it depends. Um, uh, I use, I sometimes use, uh, I show you that, because it's something I put in my bag, so it's, it's also in theme. I, I use um, this system, it's a Mikey, Makey, Make, as you pronounce it, S uh, flash, macro flash system. So this macro flash system, it, it, this is the second, it, this, this, there are two versions. 
there's a Mark II version and this Mark II version permit me to use the flashes and to use this light as a focusing light. So I sometimes use this and this is helpful, of course. Uh, another time, use I, I'm at night, for example, I use my head torch, my headlamp. Be also because using the mirrorless cameras, you also you have the focus peaking and the you know light enhancement. So it's also very useful, even if you are um, photographing not in stop down, you know, you, you are focusing without, you, you are, sorry, you are yeah, foc getting the focus without uh, opening the aperture wide open to, to get the, you know, the, the, to, nail, to nail the focus. So yes, uh, this is another thing I do. And sometimes I use some LED lights uh, that I put around to, to have some light. But normally, yes, the headlamp. For macro shootings, the headlamp is the thing I use the most to, to, get, the, to, to get everything in focus, to, to be sure about the focus. Uh, another one, Pranay, is asking how to focus stack using Lawa 100 millimeters. I don't focus stack, I'm sorry. Uh, there are many people that do focus stacking. I don't do, normally do that. If I did in the past, uh, the photos you are seeing now, they are not in uh, focus stacking, they are single shots. And I don't do that normally. If I did in the past, I ju just took a few shots uh, at like F13 and a few shots just to have a little, a little deeper depth of field, but it's enough. It's just for, for, for trial. Uh, yes, Lawa is also recalling you the 5% discount uh, putting Eman B05 on the Lawa website if you are buying lenses. I will recall this even later. Um, let's go, let's go, let's go. A few minutes are still left. So what I put in my camera, this is not, this is not my backpack, but just to give you a hint, when you are in the field, when you're in expedition, uh, normally you think uh, you try to avoid weight, of course, but you need stuff, you need gear. So this was my backpack, uh, backpack packed like three days ago in the morning. I went near Rome city uh, in a very good place where I was shooting. And this is my backpack already packed go, to go back home uh, with all my stuff packed uh, very tightly <laughs> all together. Um, this is actually the 100 millimeters. Sorry, Lawa guys, I, I was using another cover in the, that case because I lost the original one. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but it, this is. I don't actually have any more Nikon lenses inside my backpack now. Um, I will show you all the lenses I'm carrying. Uh, I, I wanted to show you also some of the images I do with all the lenses. So this is a, a, a photo with the 15 millimeters shift lens, macro lens, uh, that is also shift. This is another photo I did with another lens I use, I still use for underwater and for some tricky shots on land. That is the Tokina 10 to 17 millimeters fisheye lens because it's autofocus. And when I need autofocus with moving subject, I use that lens. In all the other situation, I use the 15 millimeters because it's sharper and it delivers way more quality on the image. So if I have, I, I use the uh, Tokina or, or for example, underwater, as I told you. So in these cases, I use the, the, you know, the other sides, I use the 15 millimeters. This is another example why I like the 15 Lawa instead of the fisheye Tokina. This is the, a photo with the fisheye, the Tokina 10 to 17. Okay, it's fine, but I didn't like the sun at all. The sun star, it's, it's terrible. And so I, 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 I shot the same image with a, with a 15 millimeters macro from Lawa, and this is way better to me. But this is my, of course, my, my opinion, of course. Um, this is just for, to end this. Uh, this is uh, uh, two examples of what I can do with the 15 millimeters macro. I, you already saw that, uh, this is another one. Um, this is the only lens actually that can permit you to move the focus and the aperture manually. 
and to do the stars uh, subject uh, photos wide angle like this one you need this type of lenses and the tokina for example doesn't have an aperture ring on it so i couldn't move the aperture from f16 to f4 for example this is another very important thing to do if you want to do this this guy this type of wide angle macro at night and i love the 24 millimeters macro problems from uh, Lawa. I'm always having this in my backpack. I, why? Because, for many reasons, uh, because it permits me to go low, to stay low on the ground. It, it gives you a perspective that any other lens doesn't permit you. Uh, you can go into the grasses, you can go into things uh, to have a deeper perspective of the macro shootings you are doing like in this case with this salamander that was under a leaf and i put the light over to get this amazing and intimate shot amazing for me because it was the first time i was able to put the lens so close and so um, in an intimate way with the subject so i really love this lens the 24 pro lens this is another um, example of this lens these are two um, Black Widow from Italy, the, the, the left one is male and uh, you can see the lens standing side of them very low on the ground, very very nice. If I tried such image with a 15mm Lawa, it would, it would have been trickier with such a tiny subject among rocks to have the same perspective. It, 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 can, it doesn't mean that you can not do that. But it's in some occasion, it's very tricky. For example, in this case, I tried and I got with a 15 millimeters macro this shot of a black widow uh, on his web. I tried the same with the 24 millimeters and I got this shot. So it, it, it's all about perspective. It's all about what you prefer. But in this case, I prefer this image instead of the previous one, this one. Even if I like this, of course, as well, I kept this, but of course, this one is more into the world, into the tiny world of spiders. Another thing uh, for what I like this, this lens, the, the, the Lawa, the probe lens, is that you can put the, it in the, into the water and you, say, you could say, okay, of course, uh, you already have the Outex sleeve, the, out, the underwater camera, you, of course, but you cannot do the shooting I'm doing there in this image with that stuff. Uh, to reach that fish in its burrow, pointing out just with his head, it would have been impossible with any other lens instead of the Lawa, the Pro lens. So uh, this is a unique lens in this case because it permits you to go underwater for about, you know, 25 centimeters let's say so it's very useful i never use the led light in front i also kind of like the sharpness of this lens even if i would like it to be a little bit more wide i mean more um, get, to get more light and a little bit more sharp uh, a little a, a little uh, more sharpness when i go on on, on the land but is still very usable. I, I printed these images, they are sharp, uh, they can be printed in large print, so this is enough. I mean, I love this lens and I co will continue to use it a lot. Um, uh, Egle was uh, asking about the stars in the background and he was asking, she was asking if they are stuck. No, it's a single shot image. Um, the one I showed before, I will probably get back if you want. If I have a few minutes, Lawa guys, you can say me if I have a few more minutes to, to go there. And uh, I, I, um, I, I do the shot in 30 seconds. I start with focusing and aperture for the subject. So F, uh, let's say F16 six, and uh, flashes on the subject. The flashes pop when I click and then the, 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 the photos is going on now 30 seconds so it, during the 30 seconds as smoothly as i can i turn to infinite to get the stars 
and I turn the aperture from f16 to let's say f4, the maximum aperture of the 15 millimeters, and I left, I leave the camera, and I got that shot. It's sometimes it's tricky for the back, for the for the middle ground. Uh, you uh, you can get some blurred areas, but it's fine. You can really get some nice shots. Uh, back to the to the to the probe i really love to these shots of the surface this is not a, a upside photo it's a, it's a, it's an animal skating on the uh, surface uh, the, on the lower surface of the of the water on the lower side on the you know on the on the roof <laughs> of the water so uh, this is another shot that i was able to do in a very shallow pool thanks to the probe and another lens i'm using nicely in the late in the last month is the nine millimeters from lava is this is the i think the low the the widest existing full frame lens uh, not fisheye lens uh, in the world it's it's amazing and uh, you can see the setup here with the, the diffuser flash uh, I, I i put the camera on the ground so uh, yeah, it's very easy, very simple. I use the delayed mode not to uh, convey any vibration moving my hands on the camera. So I clicked and waited for three seconds before the actual uh, photo being taken. And I got this shot. Uh, lately, and it's really the end of my presentation, I'm also trying to do my lenses, <laughs> starting with the Laua lenses. So I started trying to do the craziest thing in my life uh, so so sorry um uh, i'm trying to build something that can permit me to have a super wide angle super macro lens it's actually a, a so-called relay lens it's a mixture of lenses attached all, to, all together um, this is an example and how I, I, I took this, this photo? I took this photo attaching the 100 millimeters Laua lens to an extension tube and in front of it I attached other things. I think I have them here. Yes. I use this. Sorry. I use this. This system. So it's two Rhinox. Uh, DSC 250 uh, a little extension tube and a CCTV lens one the one used for example for the GoPros or for the um, uh, cameras for security cameras sorry I wasn't recalling the name so uh, I'm trying to do this kind of shots and you can do th something similar with the 15 millimeters for example like in this case but the, the, the perspective is very different and the animal and the background in this case are more visible all together. So it's a different kind of approach to wide angle macro. I'm, I, I talk a lot with the Laua guys uh, hoping they will probably, they will possibly do their own um, super mega <laughs> wide angle relay lens one day because I think that their engineers, they, their abilities are way more able than me and my trial and error technique to get the best quality of these images. But I'm already quite happy about the results of what I'm doing. Uh, this is a non-brand, unbranded lens I found on eBay. So I, I cannot give you the right name of these things because I don't know it's 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 a mess it's a wild it's a really a uh, wild side of photography so this is another example this was a very tiny fly uh, this was another occasion you can see how tiny is the subject the subject is two these two tiny funguses fungi on the leaf and this is the result and this is another occasion, this is another example, this is a water skater and this is another occasion, another example, this is a beetle, a weevil beetle um, 
of course it is another one the the, the another wide super uh, super wide angle macro we are getting to the end and then i will get to the your question i see many very interesting questions so i'm, I'm really going fast for you uh, this is another example this is a beetle shot with the relay lens and this is the same shot with the probe lens from Lawa. I love both photos. I keep and use both photos. Uh, but uh, as you can see, the, the relay lens I created using the 100 millimeters have a little bit more depth of field in the background. But the quality in general of the shot is better on the probe. So I'm still working on this. And I saw a question from Ariel that is saying, have you used the Lawa 25 mm Ultra Macro? Of course, I love that lens. I always have this lens in my backpack. It's here with me, of course. I always use this to do super classic macro photo like this one. I was prepared about your question, as you can see. This is a very tiny lichen on a rock with a very tiny Acarian uh, on the top of it, like waiting for the aliens to get it probably with the with the legs straight up. This is another example of the or of me using the 25 millimeters ultra macro. I love that lens. It's a tricky lens. You have if you want to do the single shot as I, as I do, uh, you always have to find the right perspective, the right the right angle to do the shot and to get the thing you want in focus in this shot. If you do stacking, it's not a problem. You just go and you, you can do your stack as you, as you wish, of course. So this is the end of my presentation for tonight. I'm trying to um, reply to some of the, the, the previous questions. I see that Pranay uh, I was asking, can the, the 15 millimeters wide angle macro be used for landscape photography? Yes, it can be used. Um, sure, as, as Dave Razzi replied as well, I use it a lot for uh, general uh, landscape photography. I love it. And also I like the 77 uh, ring, front ring of this lens. So, um, you can put uh, the, the filters uh, easily on it and uh, so I, I use this with uh, you know degrading filters and the filters um, polarizing filters and it always gets me very nice results so yes you can use this without any problem uh, I, I don't know if there are any more questions um, I, I wanted to do also tonight um, a shout out for James Tonking, the talking, sorry, uh, he will be hearing and having a live uh, for Lawa on the 7th May, so in about uh, 10 days, I mean, I mean next month. Uh, he's a documentary director who, was tw who has 20 years experience. He participated in many music shows from the globe. He worked with Beyonce, Rihanna, the Rolling Stones, Taylor Swift, and many more. So I really, I really advise you to follow the next Meeting Masters uh, happening on the 7th May. I will be there probably because it's very interesting to me to see such experience in such different uh, field uh, than myself. Uh, there are, there are a, a little more questions we uh, Ger is asking which do you prefer for sony e-mount the 25 millimeters of that 100 millimeters as a full frame and what is the difference okay this is a very very difficult reply because these are similar but different lenses if you are starting with macro and you are starting getting into the ultra macro side, I would advise you the 100 millimeters because it's easier to use and you can go on infinite if you use this as a classic 100 millimeters lens. It's sharp, it's cr incredibly sharp. And if, if you go with uh, you know a lot of megapixel camera, you, you can crop and even get uh, a slightly, um, of course, uh, 
magnification or after by cropping of course if you want if you do but if you want to do like ants very small things very small mushrooms then i advise you to do that with the 25 millimeters lens mm, the difference are these ones the use of of this the, the the subject you are going to do are the main difference of course the more you go in the macro and in magnification the less depth of field you need and you you will have and the more light you'll need so be prepared to have your macro flashes ready i use these flashes with this diffuser and i mount as a as a last note about my photography i mount another diffuser on them a custom made diffuser i cut this this wing and i put some velcro here so this is my setup when i do macro two of them mounted on these brackets photo pro brackets you can find the photo pro the mikey flashes on the macrodojo.com website uh, the, it's, it's the store of nikki bay this is He's also a very good friend and a Lawa user as well. You, you, you also find Lawa there, but, but about buying Lawa stuff, I remind you that uh, for a week since uh, today, you will have a 5% discount code on Lawa site, um, putting Eman B05 on their discount check uh, while you are checking out with, the, with your buying so i rem i wanted to uh, remind you uh, this because it's uh, yeah it's nice to get you to, to to be able to let you have some discount if you need to buy uh, the lenses from lawa um okay thank you very much i thank you everyone i think we are about the end Yes, I thank you everyone. Uh, thank you to everyone that uh, connected here tonight from like in India. It's very late in India. It's uh, almost 2 a.m. in India. It's well, so welcome to Saturday. Uh, it was very, very nice to have you all here. Um, thank you for the Lawa guys, to the Lawa guys, Lee Lemon, Kevin Young, and all the other people from Lawa to, for permitting me to be here again once to to tell you more about my work how i plan it and how i do that so thank you if you have any more question about my techniques my gear i use i i i, I hope i I, um, te I told you everything but if i missed something please feel free to write me on instagram on facebook everyone uh, to uh, ask me where whatever you want whatever you need to know I will be more than happy to give you advices if you need also about to know about the outex underwater sleeves i will be more than happy to tell you also about that too because i'm using them and they giving me so much happiness <laughs> together with the lava lenses so it was very nice very nice thank you thank you all the guys from italy too marco rampinelli nicola zanino all the others guys all, all the all the people from chile from all the parts of the world. It was very nice. So thank you so much. All the best. <laughs>